Okay, thank you. So um, uh, in this talk, as uh, Rory said, we're going to see how our team adopted Go as a main programming language for our microservice-based application. So just before we start, uh, who has used Go uh, so far? Uh, no, not much people, but yeah, <laughs> that's that's good. So it will not be for uh, uh, it will be for beginners. So no worries. Uh, just a bit about me. I'm staff software. I'm Daniel Delizia, staff software engineer at Commerce Tools. I have. Uh, I'm working as a software engineer for uh, now. It's 14 years, uh, uh, more or less. Uh, I'm working uh, in on the commerce uh, uh, e-commerce field uh, since uh, 2010. Uh, I started at the Commerce Tools in May 2022. I worked on different uh, program with different programming language like Java, Python, JavaScript, TypeScript, and now Go. And I started uh, work, uh, playing <laughs> basically with Go uh, around two years ago and mostly on side project. So the agenda for today, we're going to see uh, uh, a background of the team and the project uh, we are working on, why we use Go, uh, how we learned Go, uh, how we improved uh, the team uh, uh, productivity, and finally, some uh, takeaways and a question. So let's start uh, with uh, some uh, background. And uh, let's see, uh, first of all, let's start with uh, what is Commerce Tools. Uh, Commerce Tool is the leading platform for next generation B2C and B2B commerce. Uh, it provides, uh, uh, it's an headless commerce uh, uh, platform, so it allows you to separate uh, backend uh, from front end and offers uh, e commerce uh, functionalities uh, via uh, a flexible API, which can be REST or uh, uh, GraphQL. So, what do you think is the most uh, complex uh, piece in an e commerce Im implementation? Anyone? Want to Dev? Uh, yeah, it's related to the bank. Yeah, the, the checkout is the most complex uh, piece in any commerce uh, implementation because uh, there are complex tasks to do, like task calculation, card calculation, and uh, of course uh, payments. You, know, you need to uh, make uh, uh, you need to execute payment with payment providers. So uh, our product is basically uh, focused on that. Uh, we provide a, a plug and play uh, checkout experience uh, for the commerce tools uh, API. And uh, we optimize the checkout flow, and uh, we offer easy integration with multiple payment providers. A bit about the team. Uh, the team was built from scratch. Uh, uh, the first developer started in March uh, 2022, so it's not even uh, one year when the first developer started. Uh, most of the team has experience with uh, JavaScript and TypeScript, uh, and uh, some of them also, like me, also with Java. Uh, and uh, how the dev team is composed. We have three front-enders, uh, uh, it's five back-enders, and uh, two SREs that helps us uh, with the uh, infrastructure. I personally, as I said, I started in May uh, 2022 uh, as a staff software engineer for this uh, uh, project. Uh, our tech stack, uh, on the front-end, we mostly have React, which is a lighter version of uh, uh, React. On the back end, uh, most of the microservices are built in uh, Go, uh, but we also have some uh, Node.js TypeScript uh, uh, microservice and uh, database. We have Mongo, ODB, and Redis for some caching. And uh, infrastructure is uh, uh, Kubernetes, uh, mainly based on uh, top of Google Cloud Platform. So this is an overview of uh, uh, a background of uh, uh, where we uh, are coming and. Uh, and why we use Go? Uh, yeah, mm, there are various reasons. So first of all, let's start to introduce what is Go. Go is uh, a programming language. It's statically typed. It's compiled. Uh, it, it doesn't have a virtual machine like Java, uh, but it compiles to bytecode. Um, it's garbage uh, collected, uh, so you don't need to deal with, uh, uh, with memory, like C, for example. And uh, it offers simple syntax, but even if it's simple, and uh, uh, it, it has good uh, actually readability. And uh, for our team coming uh, mainly from uh, Java and JavaScript, now they added also generics, which is a uh, great additions. And yeah, this is a simple hello world. So it will print hello world. <laughs> uh, we are dealing with payments. So payments is uh, kind of uh, complex uh, and also uh, uh, needs needs uh, to take care of uh, security. So 
why go is uh, uh, it's good for that uh, first of all it's uh, th basically the standard library of go offers uh, uh, most of the tools that you need uh, for web development so that caused us to use uh, li really few dependencies on our uh, on our code base uh, around all the uh, golang uh, uh, microservices we have ar uh, around uh, in total uh, 10 or 15 uh, uh, external dependencies so this is a, a good uh, thing. So it also, as it compiles to uh, machine code, then it's easy to create uh, uh, distro-less uh, Docker images. And uh, Go comes also with uh, security tools built in. Uh, one, for example, is fuzzy testing, where you can uh, just generate uh, random values to test uh, your functions uh, and, uh, and producing this uh, random input. Uh, and also vulnerability management. So the, this was actually recently added. So you can report uh, uh, vulnerability and uh, also you can scan for uh, uh, the vulnerability that you have uh, on your project. This is an example. This is a dependent bot uh, alert uh, page of, uh, uh, of our uh, monorepo. Uh, as you can see, most of the uh, most of vulnerability are coming from an APM. So, and, uh, and we have just few projects uh, <laughs> with, uh, with Node, so just, uh, just an overview. So another good thing about uh, Go is uh, uh, the developer tooling. It has a great uh, VS Code uh, plugin, which makes it uh, uh, an IDE, basically. You can, do, uh, uh, you can put breakpoints, you can uh, run uh, uh, in the bug mode, uh, etc. Uh, it, it has a built-in uh, complete test framework, which uh, doesn't not just allow to test uh, things, but uh, also uh, gives you uh, profiling uh, for uh, coverage. Uh, it allows you to build a, a stress test, uh, uh, test stress conditions, and uh, all of them it's really just a, a command to execute. Uh, also, the code styling uh, comes uh, by default, so you don't need to lead, uh, to deal with uh, things like YesLint uh, and uh, Prettier and the different configuration that you can have. Uh, you have one way to do it, it's, uh, uh, and uh, you need to stick to it. Uh, also, static uh, analysis with Govet. Uh, actually, yeah, it comes with already with some uh, static analysis uh, 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 tools. But you can also build uh, uh, tools into on top of GoBet that uh, that you want. It has a dependency management with GoMode is similar to npm from people coming from uh, from JavaScript. And uh, yeah, also uh, as we said, it's uh, 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 it compiles to machine code and uh, offers uh, uh, cross compilation, which is good because uh, from uh, any platform, for example, uh, any op Operating system, you can build uh, uh, your uh, 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 your bytecode. Uh, sorry, your uh, your binaries uh, also for Linux uh, for a different architecture, uh, and yeah, that's uh, you don't need to basically change your uh, uh, use different laptops to do different builds. Uh, performance. Uh, uh, maybe you have heard that uh, Go it's uh, good at performance, so that's a good thing everybody knows. But uh, yeah. It's also a uh, good thing is that the compiler is fast. Uh, you can execute go run and actually under the hood is doing a compilation and starting the application and you don't even realize that that is happening. Uh, today I just counted uh, also our uh, test that we have uh, in our, uh, in all of the Golang repository, uh, in our repository Golang uh, once uh, and we have uh, around a thousand uh, uh, tests uh, uh, there. And they are running in uh, like less than five seconds, so it, it's really fast at that. Um, yeah, performance also. You need to diagnose uh, uh, if something is happening. Uh, you can diagnose uh, easily with uh, Go. You can build your benchmark test. Just uh, uh, there is uh, there is the framework is embedded in Go, and also then once you have a. Uh, you can output from this benchmark test uh, uh, the uh, the profiling uh, the information, and then you can analyze with uh, uh, with tool like pproof, which comes also with Go. 
so it gives you actually uh, a view of uh, what is happening on uh, on all the call stack that uh, uh, that happens at the time. Uh, this is maybe a bit controversial for if anyone knows <laughs> Go, but uh, yeah, it's uh, I really like the explicit error handling uh, that Go has. Uh, there are still talks uh, in the community uh, how to improve it, uh, how to make it better, maybe some uh, syntactic sugar, but basically in, uh, in Go uh, you don't have try-catch, error uh, are just treated as a data, and uh, so th that case means that uh, uh, error handling must be explicit, and you need to, uh, you need to check it with hifs. Uh, you can enforce uh, to ch uh, handle, or handle all the errors uh, uh, via static uh, code check, and yeah, that's uh, that's something that I like because it helps us uh, to actually uh, make uh, our uh, error uh, checking uh, really strong and uh, and uh, handling the error in a quite quite comfortably. So. Uh, Let's move to uh, learning Go. As you know, uh, it's easy. Uh, it's an easy language. Uh, that there are not of uh, syntax uh, things to, to learn. But uh, yeah, of course, uh, mm -hmm. like every other language, uh, you need to uh, to take into account uh, different things. So learning syntax is not enough. Uh, and uh, yeah, basically, you put your, you need to put uh, your hands on one. While you start that, there are some uh, silent gotchas that uh, might get your uh, uh, scratching your head. And also, uh, as there are different uh, way to do things, uh, you need to basically uh, clarify and agree with the team also what uh, uh, how to do things. Uh, this this is needed to improve readability of uh, your code base. Uh, here I'll show just some example. There's uh, this uh, concept of uh, variable pointers in, uh, uh, in in Go, which is no, uh, which doesn't exist uh, in uh, in JavaScript and uh, Java. Uh, so first of all, we declare uh, you know, we have a normal variable that we can declare. Then uh, we can uh, we declare just a pointer and then uh, initialize uh, the pointer to the reference uh, with the ampersand to the uh, to the uh, to the value that we uh, declared at the beginning. So as you can see, if we print all those values, you will see that uh, the first one will print the value, but uh, the the other two uh, will print uh, uh, out uh, uh, the memory uh, address, uh, an hexadecimal uh, string, which is uh, actually the pointer uh, in memory of uh, that uh, that object. Why this is important? Because uh, yeah, it's important because when you go uh, and uh, and you write your code, you uh, may want to uh, pass your uh, variable to uh, as a refer uh, by reference or by value. Uh, with if you pass it by reference, you basically will be able to mutate it. If you pass it as value, uh, you will just make a copy and, uh, and you will work on the copy. So it's. Uh, Sometimes uh, uh, for developer uh, at the beginning was uh, uh, a strange con concept that uh, was uh, uh, the if you clarify the beginning then it's uh, it's better. Also, there is the concept of zero values. Uh, so, what is a zero value? Basically, is the value that takes uh, a variable when uh, it's not actually initialized. For uh, a, num a numeric, uh, uh, it's zero. For a boolean, it's false. For string, it's uh, empty empty string, which is a bit different than uh, what we have in uh, JavaScript uh, and, uh, and, uh, and Java. And then, uh, yeah, uh, and uh, if you want to declare something as nil, you need to, it needs to be a pointer. That is important when you declare your, uh, when you want to marshal and marshal your uh, uh, JSON uh, uh, objects to a, a, a struct, to, a, to an object in, uh, in Go. And uh, because, yeah, uh, if you want to declare something as uh, uh, null, you need to declare it as a pointer, not uh, as an empty variable, an empty string. So also, uh, the way of uh, structuring the code is uh, maybe a bit different. And uh, this is uh, as we are dealing with uh, uh, this explicit error rendering, which needs to 
uh, have uh, this if uh, statements to check uh, if there is an error. Then uh, uh, it's better to do early, uh, early returns. So this, uh, if you check this code, it's actually a bit uh, complicated to understand what is happening, what is going on. Uh, you have a, you execute a start function, you get the error, you then execute a fetch uh, existing. I mean, it's a bit uh, messy. We can rewrite, this code can be rewritten like this, which is uh, basically, I have the same output, but yeah, you are, uh, it's much uh, more clear to, to read it uh, uh, like this. So I'm not going uh, to go through all the uh, syntax uh, and uh, things that Go has, but yeah. Uh, other issue that we face is basically naming convention. Uh, my advice is to read uh, the effective Go, which uh, explain how to write uh, idiomatic Go. Also, uh, structure the project. Uh, when you start with a new language, you need to decide what uh, uh, what is the structure of uh, your project. So, uh, Go allows you to do whatever you want, and uh, and then you need to find a way. So normally, uh, it matches really well with domain-driven design kind of uh, structure of, of your code. And there are a lot of articles. I mean, uh, everyone uh, gives you their opinion. So just make sure you uh, you think about that, and uh, you you, uh, you have a it can give some hint, but at the end you need to decide. Uh, also, uh, small. Uh, Go as the concept of uh, interfaces uh, to uh, and uh, uh, which you need to basically implement. And uh, when you work uh, with different, uh, it's different a bit of uh, well, what you do in Java. But basically, uh, the advice uh, uh, they give is always work with small interface, which means uh, oh, prefer the composition over the inheritance. And uh, for that, you can leverage the Bendix uh, in, uh, in Go. And also, it's important to leverage uh, dependency injection. And uh, that may uh, make easy to, uh, to test and, uh, uh, and mock uh, our uh, services <laughs> and functions. So now uh, it comes to how our team uh, uh, has improved uh, uh, the, produ the productivity. So we started from zero. We wanted to uh, make the team onboarding really fast and, uh, uh, and uh, actually create, build code uh, that we can ship to, to, to production. So first of all, what we mean for productivity in our case, uh, uh, we are, a, as you said, uh, as you have uh, seen, uh, we are a small team. And, uh, and what we wanted to do is, uh, and we are kind of startup within commerce tools. Uh, we wanted to allow the team uh, to focus on the business logic. We don't want to have uh, them uh, spending time on boilerplate code. Also, uh, we want to ship fast, so uh, as any startup wants to do, but also uh, uh, ensuring that the quality uh, was, uh, uh, was good. So now I'll list some of the tools that we use to achieve that. It's not full list. We don't have much time to do that, but uh, yeah. First of all, uh, uh, our uh, we uh, we used a monorepo. Uh, I mean, this is not just Go, but uh, this uh, I think is something to mention because uh, uh, we wanted to uh, have a single source, uh, source of uh, of code to improve visibility across uh, all the components uh, and all the microservices that we have. Uh, allows code sharing uh, easily uh, and uh, also improve collaboration. So, so uh, as a small team, we were working uh, on different microservices, so it was easy to collaborate instead of going uh, through different uh, repository. Uh, also, uh, discoverability is important. Uh, in our case, we want to uh, uh, know what was happening uh, within the different uh, pieces of the uh, uh, of the architecture and, uh, uh, and the application. And also, uh, it allows us to do easy refactoring. As a startup, we, we have pivoted as well. <laughs> uh, and uh, and uh, in that case, it was easier to refactor uh, our code. 
uh, instead of going through different uh, repository and doing uh, changes there or having a library repository where uh, things may have become a bit more complicated. Uh, this is a tool that we use uh, uh, mostly for, uh, it's a framework built in Go for uh, building microservices. Uh, it, uh, it has a DSL language that uh, written in Go that you can use. And basically we use uh, this uh, uh, framework to generate our uh, HTTP and gRPC code um, based on, uh, on the DSL that, uh, uh, that we specify. And then uh, we can focus on basically on the uh, on the business logic, also uh, on building the business logic. Um, Goa uh, also generates the documentation for you, so it's uh, it's a good tool to keep in sync uh, documentation uh, with uh, actually what uh, uh, what we have implemented. Uh, this is an example. I mean, maybe it's too clear, but yeah. Uh, as you can see, this is a DSL uh, uh, language that is mostly uh, similar to it to um, Swagger or Open API, Open API. But uh, yeah, uh, as it is written in Go, uh, you can uh, componentize it, and uh, for example, error handling, uh, you can uh, kind of componentize and make it as a library. It will help you then to uh, you can share that to make it consistent across. Uh, different uh, uh, different microservices. Uh, how Goa works, uh, you define your DSL uh, uh, language, uh, uh, your DSL uh, specification. Uh, for example, normally we use uh, design.go as uh, name of the file. Then you execute uh, the CLI tool, which is Goa gen uh, design.go. And out of that, uh, you can uh, create uh, both uh, gRPC and REST uh, API, both client and server side. So then you can focus uh, on uh, building just, uh, uh, by implementing an interface, you basically uh, can dedicate time to build the, uh, the, the business logic. And all the server and client will be uh, generated uh, for you. Uh, um, of course, we are, for the moment we are using just REST API, but we will have, uh, if we will at some point that we want to move to gRPC, then uh, it will be basically easy to uh, implement, uh, uh, to have a, a gRPC interface uh, to our uh, API. Uh, yeah, as I mentioned, the good thing is that when you generate the REST API, you generate also the documentation. So you can expose the documentation, and it will always be in sync with, uh, with uh, your uh, REST API. Uh, static check uh, is also another tool that we use. Uh, we said that there is uh, for analysis, uh, for code analysis, uh, we said that the Go offers GoVet. But yeah, uh, as I said, also GoVet uh, allows you to, uh, to build your own static uh, code checks. And uh, static check is kind of aggregator of uh, a lot of uh, those uh, static analysis tools. And uh, you you can execute it by running just static uh, check and you can configure and uh, yeah, you can do, a, uh, you can make it, uh, you can make part of your pipeline easy. easy. So uh, between uh, all the things that it does, uh, it can find bank, uh, bugs, uh, uh, find performance issue, uh, provide simplification in the code. Uh, as I said, uh, you can check uh, that er every error is handled and you can enforce uh, like this uh, enforcing uh, style rules as well. And finally, uh, API test. Uh, this is a, a testing library that we use for testing our API. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's basically, uh, we use it uh, for uh, our, let's say, component test to, to test independently our, uh, each of our microservices. And uh, this help, uh, help us, uh, uh, when you test independently, you may have dependencies on other uh, microservices, which needs uh, uh, an HTTP call, and it's easy to mock those uh, uh, dependencies. Uh, you can, uh, yeah, it offers uh, uh, cert functions uh, and uh, also with uh, JSON support. And uh, it's fully integrated with uh, Golang uh, test framework. So it's uh, it's easy to uh, to integrate uh, it on your pipeline, so 
just by executing go test you will be able to uh, execute uh, your test with uh, uh, w with uh, without any problem you don't need to install any other tool or whatever you just start the library and write your test a test uh, it's pretty self-explanatory uh, this is an example of test you declare your handler uh, which is uh, similar to what you do uh, wh when you create uh, an express in uh, Node.js uh, uh, handler uh, and then uh, the, the test uh, basically say uh, handler function you start up uh, that uh, function and then uh, you do get uh, on, a, on a specific endpoint and then you expect that body and uh, status or whatever is uh, and additionally you can mock also dependencies uh, in this uh, uh, microservice just for your reference I uh, once I started to use this basically I don't use postman <laughs> anymore to test uh, microservice so I just start this I test everything on this and then I move to the next microservice so we use other tools, but yeah, uh, just uh, I'm going to the conclusion. So some takeaways uh, from uh, our experience. So I, I think uh, 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 on our experience, uh, what worked uh, was uh, to make sure that the team uh, puts uh, hands uh, on code uh, uh, during learning and also your, your the code that you produced. And uh, it's important to provide also them uh, with uh, some uh, uh, some patterns and uh, some examples so they can actually experiment with that but also learn from uh, those example and also make sure that uh, all the team is following the same logical thread uh, across uh, all the microservices especially when you are a, a small uh, a small team you don't want uh, anyone doing things uh, as they want so just you need to uh, mitigate uh, that uh, that and uh, how you make sure also uh, to to uh, to have uh, developers not uh, producing the error, it's uh, enforcing uh, uh, testing and also uh, s checking uh, uh, with static uh, analysis tool uh, as, early, uh, uh, as soon as possible. Because, uh, yeah, developers can start to do always the same errors, and if you don't catch it at the beginning, they will continue to do that, and it, it will always become uh, more complex to. Uh, to fix uh, those uh, those things or, or even changing the mind of the developer so that worked uh, well uh, for us so that's uh, basically it so <laughs> any questions <laughs> thank you thank you so much thank you so much Anita. I'd actually like to start with one of my own questions you mentioned there that you used a uh, static analysis tool for code coverage and then separately to that you said you enforced code patterns how much did you configure your uh, static analysis tool to use your particular code pattern did you do that at all and which tool did you use uh, by patterns examples we uh, what we uh, I did was uh, basically providing uh, uh, the team with uh, example microservice uh, like a crude, uh, how we gonna do it? Uh, so they were using that uh, code base to then uh, replicate and uh, apply that uh, on uh, other microservices, or understanding how to structure the code, and uh, that gives uh, them uh, this uh, that kind of knowledge. So like a template. Yeah, a template. Uh, okay. The well, static check was mostly for checking that, uh, for example, I'm checking, uh, uh, I'm handling all the errors. I'm. Uh, declaring uh, anything that uh, is not uh, like a go uh, <coughs> like a go there is a you need for example the package you it's advised to not use uh, the underscore uh, on the package okay. so it's good to check that uh, all these kind of things right, right. Uh, it's difficult to catch it uh, on uh, your ci pipeline if you uh, it's difficult to catch on a pr and it's easier to get on uh, yeah, yeah, to, to catch it on uh, Fine. Okay, thank you. Uh, at the back? Uh, yeah, I have a question regarding uh, the test. It's really interesting that uh, you have to set the code text, then the random value generator. To the fuzzy test, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, you need your unit because you. Uh, 
you need to actually uh, create the test. I mean, uh, th th there is a tool, got, uh, it's called GoTest, that can generate you uh, a template of the test based on the function, which helps you to get started. But then actually the, the logic you need to, uh, uh, and also, yeah, recently we had the experience that, uh, yeah, the code generated by, uh, by Go is not always the most, uh, uh, efficient for the test that you need to do uh, and also the most readable one so sometimes uh, it's better to create your test and make uh, it a bit more readable and uh, regarding the fuzzing uh, uh, thing uh, we I used personally for uh, something for test something specifically I'm not uh, having to use it and also the team is not having use because uh, this will run uh, basically you'll need to run for a sh for an amount of time to check uh, and uh, uh, it's just generating random values and you can, uh, uh, it's basically to catch uh, in your uh, uh, in your test uh, if uh, you forgot about uh, something uh, that, uh, and most of the time is for specific cases. I mean, we are using uh, for backend, uh, uh, yeah, we. There is some uh, concurrency that uh, we, uh, I mean, the uh, being a micro, uh, being a web application, you basically, it's uh, concurrency is happening, but you don't you don't see it. Uh, uh, but yeah, we have uh, some concurrency stuff. Uh, 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 we are not heavily use it um, based on our mm, microservice, but we have some Go routine uh, and uh, controlling the Go routine uh, uh, to, uh, for example, when we shut down uh, the server to understand if everything was uh, uh, was shut down. Yeah, we use context. Yeah, I mean, uh, if you go there. Uh, the idiomatic go, uh, effective go, uh, yeah, it's al also explained well how you to use context, which is specific things in go. You uh, and uh, yeah, it's. I mean, there will be a uh, there will be a different complete talk for to talk <laughs> about uh, context in uh, go, but yeah, it's uh, but we use it of course. Okay, nice. Next, uh, Stefan. Uh, you mean from my personal? Exactly. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I think uh, the the team uh, catched uh, coming from uh, uh, JavaScript. Uh, most of them, uh, I think the onboarding was pretty uh, fast. I would say, but yeah, the concept that I explained here are the most uh, sometimes uh, confusing one for c people coming from uh, uh, from a different background. And uh, but personally, I mean. Uh, I would uh, have liked uh, to spend more time on uh, on other things, but I had to uh, force myself to uh, try to train the team to make uh, them uh, onboarding uh, faster on uh, on the language and on the application that we were building. Yeah, so I had to focus at the beginning to build like the base uh, structure uh, to then uh, allowing them to develop on top of that. So deciding what tools we're gonna use and uh, I. I I tested Goa in the past, but uh, yeah, I decided to put it in because uh, it was kind of shielding the team from uh, like boilerplate code, create a server uh, in Go, and uh, you just needed to implement the interface. And, uh, but also as Goa generates code for you, then you can also even have a look at the code uh, that is generated, which are the best practices in, uh, in, uh, for, for that uh, specific uh, task. Okay. Advantage of, of okay. Go language, do you see? Because I heard that it's, re it's really hard when we have a graph of application, it's really hard to find out from the tray what is the real problem. Do you also mention that there is polemic about the error hand? Yeah. yeah, we are actually using a, a library which is called Error X, which is basically uh, how we are handling the error. Uh, 
it generates also the stack trace for you. You can, uh, you can actually generate the stack trace in Go. Uh, it's not uh, that you cannot do. But it's, uh, it's important to uh, handle those uh, in a certain way that, uh, that can produce you the uh, necessary log that, uh, that you can uh, actually uh, print out in the logs and uh, having a look at it. It's uh, I mean, uh, it's uh, there is no perfect language, but uh, as I said, I worked with different languages. So far, Go, I'm the most happy with. Uh, sometimes, ma maybe sometimes you need more uh, uh, dynamic things, and uh, for that a statically typed uh, language cannot give you. But uh, yeah, on the other side, if you <laughs> work in a team, then it's also a good thing that uh, with. Uh, Yeah. Methods and you can use maps to get to dynamic uh, variables. So it's just a different way of typing. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe. You don't have those limitations. Okay. Two quest Two more questions. Uh, over here. No, everything was uh, written from uh, scratch, basically. Uh, I wonder, you know, did you see a difference in the performance? Um, but what was the uh, we are, uh, we have some benchmark tests uh, on our Golang application, but uh, yeah, we didn't build, uh, uh, we didn't have uh, to co anything to compare with, uh, uh, with, uh, uh, with other, other languages. Uh, and my <laughs> in the past, I was uh, working uh, for Oracle uh, one year ago, and I was mostly working on uh, with uh, a JavaScript. And uh, in that case, I had the, uh, the opportunity to uh, I had to I was working on a uh, edge proxy uh, there, what that was written in a Node, and uh, I had to improve performances uh, of it. So uh, I I did uh, a small implementation of the same in uh, Go. It was basically <laughs> two lines of code because uh, 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 Go has a like a proxy library that you can use, a reverse proxy library. And uh, I did the benchmark test. It was uh, like I'm not say twi twice fast, uh, but uh, yeah, it was uh, much faster because uh, you were streaming. Uh, I mean, in that case, you were streaming uh, the the payload, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it depends.